and all and welcome to a thunderstorm. I wonder whether you can hear that, whether the mic is sensitive enough to pick it up, um, because I am in the middle of one of the most dramatic thunderstorms we've had here in the south of England for a while. I'm just going to go on the tablet to make sure that everything is coming through uh, loud and clear. This is probably going to be the sort of thing that is going to interfere with streaming and internet connections. But anyway, all of that aside, welcome to episode 208 of Love at First Scent with me, Percival Ace, coming to you live um, from YouTube. I think it's quietening down now, but every now and then there is a, 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 an almighty clap of thunder. So it's going to add a little bit of drama to today's episode. First comment goes to Kim, who says, good morning from Milwaukee. Amazing. Thank you very much for tuning in. And good afternoon from the Midlands, says Audrey. Did you, did you hear that? Because it, it kind of would be useful to know whether the mic is going to be picking all of this up. And Tina says, oh, I love green. Absolutely, that is what we are doing today. And I'm just going to adjust the lights a little bit because it looks as though, oh, was that a bit better? That's a bit better. Okay, hello from Muscat, says Christopher Honey. Thank you very much to all of you for tuning in. Audrey says, can only hear the rain. Oh gosh, so you can actually hear the rain. Well, this is gonna be interesting. You can tell it's all happening live. We had to do it today. There is no soundproofing in this room. Green is my favorite color in perfumery, says Woozy. Good afternoon from the Netherlands, says Sylvia. Huge, huge, huge thanks to all of you for tuning in because this is going to be the last episode that we're gonna be doing for a little while. Uh, I'm sort of packing the channel up and putting the blog away for a little bit and trying to do as little as possible on the perfume side of things until sort of beginning of September. Uh, for those of you who do follow the blog, those of you who read Persolays.com, all being well, there will be a fairly regular schedule of um, blog posts that will pop up probably about one a week with reviews of various things and um, forays into the archive but um, this is it as far as uh, live videos are concerned so I thought we would go out with another list with something rather special and I thought of greens because um, not too long ago the weather here in England was actually scorching hot and I found myself reaching for green scents but today and yesterday were the rather different but never mind these videos are here for posterity and not necessarily for the moment. And I have got in front of you now 10 of my favourite green perfumes. As always, I try not to overthink these lists. As I'm looking at them now, I'm thinking, oh gosh, I should have included this one, I should have included that one. Obviously, as we're going through the perfumes, I would love to hear from you what some of your favourite green scents are, whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording. And also, I, I, I always try to say this at the beginning, sometimes I forget, um, please do consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so, and please do consider um, supporting my work on coffee. Huge, huge thanks to all of you uh, who, who do support my work. Um, some comments coming through. I'm in North London and we've got thunder, says Kathy. Yeah, well, we're not too far away from you. I'm so here for this, says David. Good night from Indonesia, says Fahmi. Uh, bonjour from Paris, says Chang. Uh, happy to catch you live for the first time, says Jessica. Wonderful, thanks for making it. And Chang's scent of the day is Geranium pour Monsieur from uh, Frederick Mal. Hello from Fiery Texas, says Eric. And hey, Mr. P, uh, hi everyone, says Olfacto Files. Okay, very, very quickly, for the small number of people out there who may not be aware of what we mean by green perfumes, I'm really not happy with this light situation today. Pardon me while I invade your space, because it just doesn't seem to be doing it. Maybe it's because generally it's a bit darker out there but oh well we, we can live with that can't we i think that's a little bit better what do we mean by green sense very very quickly you will you will probably find uh, much more succinct definitions online than anything i could give you but strictly speaking a green perfume is one that contains materials that in some way or other uh, are redolent of freshly cut grass or freshly shelled peas or freshly cut peppers, and by that I mean um, bell peppers. Okay, so not not chili peppers. Um, and and and, the, and and those are things that, that that are green. So green bell peppers. So it's it's a very very outdoorsy scent. It's a very fresh scent, very bracing scent. It could be seen as a uh, as quite a herbal scent. Um, and green perfumes, a classic green perfume 
Freshly cut foliage, says Woozy, absolutely. A classic green perfume is one that is bracing, uplifting, but also quite exciting and energetic and and, and verdant because it is, it is meant to be completely reminiscent of uh, lush verdancy. Um, as happens a lot in perfumery, the terms that are used get broader and broader and broad, broader to the point where sometimes they become so broad that they actually become a little bit meaningless. But if we're being very, very purist about it, and as you know, we like to be quite purist about these things um, on Persilase.com, a scent that is herbal, so for instance, something that contains notes of aromatic notes of, say, rosemary or thyme or sage or tarragon may not necessarily classically be considered as green, even though it may that those notes may well be present in a green perfume because they're complementing or supporting the other green notes. Uh, pine is an interesting one uh, because pine, I think, is now counted as, as green, even though I'm not sure it always was. Fig is another interesting one, but if you think about fig leaf, that does have a very, very green um, green aspect to it. So we could have a discussion about how green some of these are as well. Um, lots and lots of comments coming through. Uh, Love Pine says Anne. Silke says Von Vert and Tender Poison. Von Vert isn't on today's list because I tried to choose um, scents that are still available but Von Vert of course is the from Balmain is the classic 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 green scent with a massive massive dose of galbanum. Uh, Ramsey says scent of the day is Amouage Memoir Man has greenness from the mint and the uh, wormwood. Really weird but really original for uh, Karine Vinchon. Well done for mentioning that one. Number 19 and Bel Respiro are probably two classic examples says Woozy. Um, Tomasz says, hello from Katowice, my scent of the day is Aqua de Parma, Arancia di Capri, orangey amber, or something like that. <laughs> Fig leaf smells green to me, says olfactor files, but not the fruit, absolutely, and lots and lots of love for tender poison. And Rashid says, hello from Sharjah, which is amazing because that's where I grew up, did most of my growing up. Where in Sharjah are you, Rashid? Or Rashid, maybe I should say. I don't know how you pronounce your name. Uh, Audrey saying bought Roseanne Queer from Frederick Mal. Appropriate shirt, Mr. Pete. Yeah, do you like what I did there? We need to get going, okay? Because we've already gone over seven minutes. Right. And we need to get the most obvious one out of the way. It's already been mentioned. And it is, of course, Chanel number 19. But I would like to do a slightly less obvious variant of it. Because we have talked about Chanel 19 on this channel a lot. Um, and, if, and if you search in the search bar and, you know, sort of, if you type in Persolace Chanel 19, I, I think at least two videos will come up. Um, I've I've got a very very strong memory on of talking on at least two occasions about the 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 bottle of the Chanel number no. 19 extra that I picked up on a trip to Tokyo, um, and and so the the main choice that I would like to present you with for this list is Chanel number no. 19, and if you can get it in extra form or in the eau toilette, those were the ones that I would recommend. But I thought we haven't talked about this for a while, if ever. And this is the number 19 Poudre flanker that came out in 2011. So this is a 2011 flanker composed by Jacques Polge. Original Chanel number 19 came out in 1971 and that was composed by Henri Robert. Uh, Olfactophile says number 19 Poudre, love it. Poudre is the number 19 I can wear, says Hanka. Interesting. I sprayed this j just a few hours before this, this video. It, it, it had a very, very effective spray mechanism um this one didn't it and i thought yeah let's do this one because we don't talk about this one enough i'm just looking outside to see how close the thunder is getting um let's pop that on there and um woozy says smells lovely but i find it leans too feminine for me personally um i suppose i know what you mean this was an interesting flanker um, much derided at the time, I think, because people were still in the mode of saying, you know, what is Chanel doing, doing making flankers of number 19? I think it was an attempt. Some of this is conjecture on my part, and some of this is sort of putting two and two together that other people have told me, and possibly making five. Um, I think it was an attempt on Chanel's part to revive the flagging fortunes of number 19. I know that there are quite prominent retailers in France who say that they consider themselves to be lucky if they sell one bottle of original Chanel number no. 19 a year. Um, 
And so good on Chanel for continuing to make it. Uh, last time I checked, which granted was a while ago, Poudre was still part of the lineup, but even if it isn't, I'm sure it would be quite easy to get. So this is recognizably 19, in the sense that you have got that green iris, sharp, hissy, hyacinth opening, maybe a suggestion of violet leaf in here as well. But I think what they tried to do um, in order to, to, to update it, I suppose, for a modern audience, they made it maybe less strident, um, less piercing. And I think that's been done through the use of really quite a huge dose of musks. This is this is a very, very, very musky Chanel number 19. Um, and, and I actually quite like the effect that that has on the dry down because you very you you, you the, 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 that 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 number 19 coldness dissipates very very quickly and then you're left with the sort of ghost of number 19 and it's an interesting effect i i think it's it, it's very very well done um ramsey saying even to this day chanel number 19 intrigues me in a way i feel i will never understand yeah it it does absolutely have that quality to it uh, Nubianette says, number 19, you haven't been here for a while, have you? Welcome. Uh, number 19 was my first real perfume back in 1983. I haven't worn it since my mid-twenties. It seems too personally retro to go back to now. Shame on me. I know what you mean. Don't, they, don't people say that about clothes as well? That if a clothes style comes back, you shouldn't wear it if you wore it the first time round. But it's okay for you to wear it if, if you weren't, you know, old enough or young enough or whatever to wear it first time round. Audrey says, Chanel number 19 reminds me of my mum. I hated it when I was younger. Oh dear, it was so strong. However, as I got older, we can both now share the passion for this scent. And Woozy says, the iris is more floral rather than rooty in this one, and the musk gives it a sweetness that is actually quite appealing. Yeah, sweet is a good word for this one, and not the kind of word that we would associate with number 19. And I guess maybe they felt that that is what they had to do to update it. Um, but there we go. Number 19 is out of the way. Not to be disparaging about it, it is gorgeousness itself, but you knew it would be on this list. And there are a few others that I'm sure you can guess as well. The next one I would like to do on this list of the top 10 greens, I want to do um, uh, this because I don't have a proper bottle for it, so nice to get that out of the way as well. Um, not wear what we have worn after a while, we'd all be naked, says A to Z. <laughs> I meant the style. So this is a little sample that I procured for myself of Corsica Furiosa from Parfum d'Empire. Maybe a bit of a controversial choice, this one. So excuse me while I just try and dip the blotter into this vial. And here we go. Controversial, I think, because I know... Oh, now there are sirens going past. I hope everything's all right. Corsica Furiosa is super duper green, says Taffy, and it was a toss up between this one and Green Spell from Eris. I adore Green Spell as well. It was hard doing this list because the same as often happens when 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 I do these lists, I start off thinking, oh gosh, I'm never going to be able to think of ten that I like, and then of course I come up with twenty and and I have to whittle things down. But Green Spell from Eris, well worth checking out as well. Not on this list, just hovering outside the top ten. And I saw somebody saying. Uh, Kim saying, I purchased Herba Fresca per your suggestion. I find it refreshing. Well, watch this space. Um, so, Corsica Furiosa from 2014 from Parfum d'Empire, made by the brand founder and perfumer um, uh, Marc Antoine Corticchiato. Um, huh. Now, the Furiosa is just the best name for this. So, it, it's inspired by Corsica, and, and it, this is a Corsican brand, I think I'm right in saying. But it's got the grass and the pine sap and the the green, green herbs, sun-kissed, sun-baked herbs that you would associate with the Corsican landscape. There's another scent coming up that I hadn't realised until I was doing the prep for this video. I hadn't realised uh, is also inspired by Corsica, which was interesting. Um, but I suppose what's worth mentioning about this one... Um, Oh, somebody's saying, I bet Green Irish Tweed will be number one. Yeah, maybe. Stay tuned and find out. Um, what's, what's worth mentioning about this one is that it also has a fleeting quality. So maybe, I mean, I, I guess that was deliberate on the perfumer's part. So it, it, it almost consumes itself. It is so furious and so tempestuous and so fiery 
but it doesn't actually last terribly long. So you can think of it as a green cologne, and it would be one that requires reapplication. So if you want a long-lasting green effect, like the sort of thing that you might get from Chanel number no. 19X Trey, or maybe even from this one, or some of the other ones that are coming up, this is not for you. And yet, I think, because it's all top notes, or mostly top notes, it has got this furiously energetic, exciting quality that most of these other scents don't. I mean, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking at them here, and there are two that are kind of zingy energetic. Um, but but this, is, this is quite special. Um, where, uh, what are we doing with the comments here? Somebody's mentioning Amazing Green from Comme des Garçons. Absolutely. Can we classify Encre Noir as a green fragrance, says Fatih. Now, I'm glad you, so somebody's mentioned, I'm glad you mentioned that, because, of course, that's a very, very uh, strong vetiver. And I haven't gone for vetiver as a green perfume. I know that a lot of people consider Garlin's vetiver to be a classic green scent. I sort of go down the line of saying that vetiver is woody, smoky, licorice-like. So, no, you, you won't find straight-up vetivers here. But, but I am planning on doing a top 10 best vetiver video. Um, that's one of the ones that I would like to do maybe in mid-September or end of September. So so no 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 straightforward vetivers here. Uh, Frag Chaitan says, I think you might be referring to Mal Time from Parfum Dampier. It was my first time trying this brand and it was so intriguing. Um, oh, are you sort of referring to somebody else? Sorry, sorry. Uh, Tomash says, I recently worn Comme de Garçon 3 and found a lot of greenery in it, though not quite fresh but more oppressive strange kind of scent. Interesting. I don't think I'm familiar with that one. Um, I wonder if copper is on here, says Eric from Comme des Garçons. Mm, cross your fingers for Pinot Silvestre, another classic one. But no, I don't even have a bottle of Pinot Silvestre. That would have that would have been an interesting one. Is Chanel Cristal in this list? You will find out. Uh, Heinke is mentioning Eau de Ciel from Goutal. Uh, and Woozy says Hiram Green's Vetiver is super green, as is Tower's Vetiver Dance, but it's not the best example of a Vetiver. Yeah, Vetiver Dance is a, probably the most intriguing tower ever, a kind of hissy, angry tower. Um, Lal was saying 19 is on the list, so I'm guessing Cristal is not on the list. Um, I don't, for this one, I haven't done a kind of a brand mustn't be repeated rule. So um, let's move on. Uh, and Chang says, just tried Malame of Parfum d'Empire, really green. I guess that's a new one, isn't it? That that um, I need to try that one. So we've done two so far, but we'll pop that there for the sake of completeness and we will move on. Okay, another fairly obvious one. It's been mentioned a couple of times already. Let's get it out of the way. A repeat for the brand. Yep, you said it. You knew it would be here. It's Cristal from 1974, Chanel Cristal. This is the EDT. Um, and... Uh, this is a recent-ish bottling of it, um, also composed by Henri Robert. Um, and this is a crystalline, classic green citrusy Chypre. Really, really gorgeous scent. Again, same as with 19. I'm, I'm, I'm so pleased that, that they still make this. Um, ah. But it's fascinating when you, when you kind of smell one green after another, you realise actually how much variation there is in the genre as well. Um, gorgeous Cristal, says Hanka. Angeline says Cristal Au Vert is lovely and green too. Absolutely, that's the most recent flanker. Um, and JR Solo says, I've made it to a live, my favourite notes. Fantastic. That would have been the scent of the day, says A to Z1. Thanks for thinking of me. Now, to, to describe Cristal, well, I've already said it. this one has a citrusy sheep quality so so the base is 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 more interested in mosses and woods than you might expect a classic green scent to be but it does at the top have that grassy herbal feel so it's not the green of bell peppers it's not the green of freshly shelled peas um do you get a peachy vibe from cristal says david maybe the the the, the fuzz of a peach but it's not sort of sweet, juicy, fruity peach at all, is it? And Cristal is probably one of the best named perfumes ever because it does have this brittle, brittle, fragile, delicate quality to it. Um, and it's, 
it's how I think you would expect a green perfume to smell if it were in outer space. It does feel like, I'm, I'm sure we have mentioned Galadriel from Lord of the Rings in relation to Cristal before, but this would be the scent of Galadriel. And and even though Galadriel is in a, she, she's she's in a forest, isn't she? That That's where she dwells, that's where she lives. Ethereal and otherworldly, thank you. She herself has got this crystalline quality to her. Um, and it's those two things that this perfume just captures and combines so beautifully. So it feels as though it is of nature, and yet it also feels as though it is completely and utterly removed from nature and and, and, and is growing in some kind of android pod somewhere on the other side of the galaxy. You've got lots to say about this one. Uh, Mm, ethereal and otherworldly we had it's very translucent and reflective indeed says david santiago and a shout out for silence from Giacomo says lalwa yeah well done thank you for mentioning that one that was a classic woozy says i'd have angelique sous la pluie on this type of list but the performance is as close to criminal as you can get and angelique is one of my least favorite frederick mals actually there aren't many mals that i dislike but but that is one of them or, or i've yet to i've yet to understand it i've, I've yet to get it um, Ormond Woman says Kazizi for Galadriel, in my opinion. Sam Tan says The Soft Lawn from Imaginary Authors. Keep the suggestions coming. But Cristal... It also reminds me that one uh, scent that I considered for the, this list is Clarence's Eau de Namizante. Because that, to me, see, it feels like the kind of reverse turned on its head structure of Cristal. So Cristal is a citrus sheep with the emphasis on the green and the sheep and Eau de Namizante is a citrus sheep with the emphasis on the citrus. I, I find the two quite fascinating um, com to, to compare them. Uh, Frederick Mal promise by Dominique Ropion says Endrit as a as a green scent or do you are you just saying that that's what you're wearing? Um, and David says Jardin sur le, sur le toit is green as well um, from Hermès with its apples and pears. We might have an Hermès coming a little bit later. Okay, I wonder if Calix will make an appearance, says C. Beeble, that for me is a classic green. It, it is It is great, but it's not on this list. You, you've got all the bubbling under ones, very a wonder from Miller Harris, says Aileen. Yeah, absolutely, that nearly made it, but it's not on here. Let's move on. Let's move on to 2015, and from Olfactive Studio, this is Panorama. I love this um, as a perfume, but I also love it as a green scent. This was composed by Clément Gavary. Beach Hut Man Amouage, says Vincent. Um, yeah, that was, was that the sort of Immortel Lavender one? I can't remember now. I think, I'm pretty sure it was. I remember, or no, or am I getting mixed up with Sunshine? Ooh, I can't remember now. Is Panorama the Celery one, says, says ZF. Well, it might be Celery, but it's certainly Wasabi. And, oh, it's just... <laughs> this one always makes me smile. Because this is this is the most unusual expression of green from the list that I've got here, um, because it 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 really really is a very accurate wasabi. So you've got horseradish, and it makes you um, think of or makes you makes you discern and notice green aspects of horseradish that you didn't even necessarily know were there. But it also has this cut grass. Facet. You, you ought to, if you've got a moment, if you haven't seen the photo that um, inspired this scent, you ought to check it out. Olfactive Studio, um, for their main line, they always have a photograph that has been the direct inspiration of each scent. And the one for this is fascinating because it, it's, it's, it's a very, very futuristic um, apartment or house, maybe it is a house, completely uh, made of glass. So you've got this rather urban, modern setting, but it's right in the middle of a very, very lush jungle. And that sums up the perfume perfectly. So you ha it, it, it's got this fizz, it's got this energy, it's got um, sparks, absolutely sparks flying, but it also has got this lush greenness. Um, and a similar effect, a similar sort of horseradishy, rooty, unsettling surreal effect was was achieved last year by Comte de Garçon in red. Now that famously uses a beetroot note and it is quite red so that's why I wasn't going to be on this list but the, the, the vibe is the same that feeling of 
that, that feeling of just laser beams surrounding you and sparks flying everywhere. I loved this from the, the very, very first moment I tried it, and I still think it's probably the best thing that Olfactive Studios have done. Uh, totally White is also green in spite of the name, says Woozy. That's from, I suppose you mean the one from Parlement de Parfum. Uh, what else have we got? David is saying, Dior's Durissimo and Lucky. Everyday Products says, my favourite green scent is Philosikos and uh, Un Jardin au... Hang on, what is it? How does it go? Jardin en Méditerranée from Hermès, yeah. Uh, what about Kalinia by L'Artisan Parfumeur and La Feuille by Miller Harris? Absolutely all good suggestions. Um, Miu Miu Lo Bleu says, David, lot, you're very good with your greens. You clearly like your dream greens, but there's an argument now going on between David and Woozy because Woozy is saying your essence, I think, is greener than Durissimo. See, I wouldn't, I don't, I wouldn't normally put Durissimo as a green one because it is, it is so lily of the valley. So that takes it straight into a floral. Um, Tsever from, from Bulgari, yeah, that could have been on here. It's not, but we need to have a fifth one done before we get to the half hour mark, otherwise we will be behind. So let's do another one that a lot of you have probably guessed. The regular viewers will know that I'm a huge fan of this, and it has to be on here. It's come up several times already. From 1999, the one and only Aqua Allegoria Herba Fresca, composed by Mathilde Laurent. Um, absolute summer staple for me, except when there is a thunderstorm outside. Oh gosh, and I've just wrecked it. Great, summer staple. Can't be used anymore. Are we going to get a spray out of this? Ugh. You can tell this bottle has got a lot of use. Is it going to... Sp oh, please tell me the spray is going to work. Oh, yes, it's working, because there is a lot left in here. <laughs> I think the actual collar has come away from the, the from the little beehive thing. Okay, let's pop that on here. Ah. <sighs> Was this Woozy saying Persele is trying to start a fist fight amongst his loyal subjects for his viewing pleasure? Yeah, just go for it. Fight. Fight amongst yourselves. <laughs> and then and then I will come along and be the sage voice of reason. Um, it is so fantastic smelling these in front. I, I know I, I can't see you and I can't hear you, although it does feel like I'm interacting with you. But just the very fact that I've got to think about these scents afresh because I need to try and somehow describe, and describe them to you makes me view them in ways that I hadn't considered before. And the, maybe because I've just smelt the panorama, I'm now getting real electricity from the mint here. Mint is a, is a, is a tricky note. And mint actually is a note that Mathilde Laurent herself has returned to a few times. And I, I think she likes using it because... It can very, very, very easily tip over in certain cultures, I suppose in Western cultures where these associati associations exist, it can very easily tip over into making you think that you're just smelling toothpaste because it is so predominant in toothpaste. So some people, we uh, somebody earlier mentioned uh, geranium pour monsieur from Frederick Mal. I think it's a genius scent, but some people can't take it because for them it gets too close to toothpaste. I, I personally don't get that with that one. I think it stays on the right side of toothpaste. Herba Fresca also some people can't take, um, but for me it completely stays on the right side of toothpaste because it has got this strong, no-holds-barred cut grass note and this is just, this for me has always been the absolutely ideal scent for muggy days. So not days that are necessarily hot and yet the skies are clear, but days where you just feel as though the air is a little bit too oppressive, where you need a thunderstorm, where the clouds just feel as though they're bearing down on you a little bit heavily. And this just seems to just push aside the clouds, almost like some kind of sci-fi weapon that, you know, you spray and it, and it dissolves the clouds before your very eyes. And it is genuinely uplifting. Again, fantastic name for it because it is like fresh grass, fresh herbs. Has the longevity on it, says Woozy. I find most from that line don't last more than a standard eau de cologne. Um, no, I've always been with the, okay with the longevity of this one. Although I, I do, as, as regular viewers will know, I always do a combination of spraying on skin and on fabric, on clothes, a bit on hair. Um, and I do do quite a few sprays. I don't hold back. But somebody said that they miss um, Mathilde Laurent being at, at Garlin. 
yeah, she did some she did some great work when she was there, and 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 I think she is um, fondly remembered there. I think Love Green Sense says Ben Dunhill Blend Thirty probably all time favorite of mine. Ooh, not sure I know that one either. I can smell it most of the day, says Jodie. Yeah, I, I, th I think I think it, it longevity is fine. And J Jodie also saying, love Herba Fresca. It was my scent yesterday, one of the hottest days of the year. And you're in Kansas. Fantastic. Um, I always thought scent was a visceral experience for me, says A to Z in one. But after watching your show for a while, it's now more intellectual. Ah, interesting. But it, but it can be both. I think that's the interesting thing, isn't it? You, I think with a lot of experiences of of art forms or crafts you have a visceral response but then you can intellectually try and deconstruct that and work out why you have had that visceral response right like if you if you read a poem for the first time it communicates something even though you may not understand exactly what it's communicating you get a response from it then you sit down and you study it and you you understand what elicited the response and i think perfume can be the same people describe anise as green i have no idea why it's purple to me says gavin Interesting. Okay. And French Lover uh, says Gino. Yeah, that's got a superb galbanum opening as well. I considered French Lover for this list, but that's not on here. So let us move on. Uh, we've got five to go here on episode 208 of Love at First Scent with me, Persolais. We're doing the top 10 best green perfumes. And as I said at the start, this is also going to be the final episode uh, for a little while, while I pack away the, the YouTube channel and have a bit of a break. And so, unless of course all my plans go pear-shaped and things don't work, but the, the plan at the moment is that we will not be doing any live videos until about maybe the first or second week of September. So start sending me some ideas of what, what you would like me to cover. This is one that I am denied about because I think it has just been discontinued, um, although it's not that hard to get. Uh, this is from a brand that do discontinue things fairly regularly. They release a lot and they discontinue a lot. Um, and people, fans of the brand out there already know that if they release something that you like, you kind of need to stock up. And this came out only five years ago. Uh, and it's from Tom Ford. And it's when Tom Ford did a... Thank, thank you, Eric, guessed it straight away, Tom Ford. It's from uh, five years ago when Tom Ford did a quartet of greens. I think two vanished pretty quickly and two stuck around. This is one of them, Vert d'Encens, so the, the, the green of incense or incense green. I think if you put in a bit of effort you'd probably still find some somewhere. Um, but this is treading that line where we would that we were talking about earlier um, where we said that some people consider um, pine to be green and this is also the perfume that I was referring to when I said a few minutes ago that there was another one not just Corsica Furiosa but another one that is inspired by the Corsican landscape because when I was looking it up on um, tomford.com turns out that that one was directly inspired by the Corsican landscape if I knew that when it was first released I'd forgotten so let's have a sniff ah so this this is this is for sure the piniest of the greens that we've got today, and yet I think it does still count as a green, and it's certainly trying to do something novel with the genre, trying to do something different, because it brings in this incense note, right, as as the name suggests, and so you have got maybe a suggestion of um, cut grass, you have got the pine sap, and you've got the incense, and so. The, the pine is coming through very strongly on paper today, actually, and. Maybe maybe I should turn this into a summer one for this summer because it, it, it's smelling really, really good here today. Um, but this, it, it is very outdoorsy. I think it's absolutely fitting that they're saying that it was inspired by the Corsican landscape because it does seem to have that wildness to it, but, but, but not as untamed as uh, the Parfum d'Empire, maybe more meditative, and it certainly lasts longer. And I think you're commenting on um, Tom Ford discontinuations, right? Woozy saying Shanghai Lily, Italian Cypress as well discontinued. Yeah, Shanghai Lily was good as well, wasn't it? Oh dear, please excuse me while I go cry and scream at a handsome pic of Tom Ford. 
And somebody here mentioning the original Gucci Envy, green and intoxicating at the same time. That's JR Solo. Thank you very much. That's a very good mention. Uh, Rachel saying, I've missed a bunch. My current favorite green is Papillon's Dryad. Yeah, Papillon always worth checking out, seeing uh, what they're doing. Plum Japonais uh, from Tom Ford mentioned, it says all Factive Studios, uh, sort of stories rather, also discontinued. Um, Nubinet says, I really miss Basilico, Aqua de Palma. I tried to replace it with green from Nana de Barry, but it didn't really do it for me. I'm realizing I must have a thing for green scents. I think a lot of us have. I think, um, oh, and a second mention for um, you or someone like you, that nearly got onto this list, but I decided that actually that was a bit too citrusy to be green. Um, and Gonzalo says, my first interaction with my favorite perfume reviewer. Thank you very much. Here we go with the green scent. You or someone like you. Excellent. Um, oh, I'm, this is, and yeah, I, I knew what I, I just suddenly remembered what I was going to say. Serge Lutin's The um, the Girl on the Pine Needles, right? The Fille en, en Aiguille. Oh, I can't say those French names. Um, it's also a sort of fragrance geek thing. I think um, green scents tend not to do very well. And I think marketing people start getting very fidgety and very nervous when a creative director or a perfumer or a brand, you know, a brand creative person say that they want to release a green scent. Um, th th they don't do very well. I mean, we talked about Chanel number no. 19 not doing very well and yet the brand still continues to sell it. Herba Fresca, I think, must be one of the exceptions. It must be doing okay, otherwise, um, Guerlain would have discontinued it by now because they, they discontinue the less successful aqua allegorias just as a matter of course. In fact, a lot of aqua allegorias are only, are only around for a year. But generally speaking, they don't do all that well. And I think in the same way that maybe some of us um, like really animalic perfumes or oudi perfumes, green seems to be a little bit of an acquired taste as well. So for instance, Madame Persolet's Can't Stand Green will not do green. Um, I would love smelling Cristal or number 19 on her, but it, it it just does something to her physically. Galbanum, she just can't take. It's another one of these sort of punch to the stomach feels for her. Um, experiences fragrances with Amina, experiencing fragrances with Amina says, after months and months of watching the replays, I finally caught a, a live all is right in the world. Very sweet. And Rachel says, I just tried lush grass and it's a beautiful grass which goes into a hay note on my want list. I see lush do good things like that as well. There is a beautiful green fragrance, says uh, Virginie, called Green Crown by Alma Perfume. Very beautiful, worth checking out. Thank you very much. So many suggestions. We've got four to go. We need to move on. And this is the third one from this brand. It was mentioned earlier had to be on here, you know what it is, from 2007, composed by Jacques Polge, Bel Respiro, and you can see this is my precious eau de toilette. I haven't got very much left of this one, and the eau de toilette in this case is definitely superior to the current eau de parfum. The whole point of this perfume, I think, is that it just has to make you feel like you've been swept away by the most gorgeous green sea breeze and the eau de parfum is just a bit too heavy and doesn't, I mean, it's, it's, it's still beautiful, but when you, when you know what the EDT is like, you can't help but miss it when you smell the EDP. Oh, it's just such a fantastic evocation of cut grass, herbs, just the most beautiful, serene, green garden, um, and, and always the sea. Now, Bel Respiro, um, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't Bel Respiro one of Mademoiselle Chanel's residences on the French Riviera? I think that was one of the ones. Or was that La Pausa? I can't remember. I, but it was definitely a residence. It was definitely a house, wasn't it? And I think it did have this beautiful garden. And each time I smell this EDT, I I'm, I'm just immediately think of a particular vision that then ended up in my book, because I included Bel Respiro in, in my book, um, of, of standing, so, so you're in a garden, and it's the garden of a beautiful white villa, it's got to be a white villa, but the garden ends at a cliff edge, and you're standing almost right at the edge, and you've got the smells from the green herbs coming 
at you from behind, but also the sea breeze bringing the, the, the freshness and, and the sort of saline feel from from the sea. And, ah, oh, and, and it does make you breathe well. Again, wonderful name. Bel, Bel, I mean, fantastic name. Um, Bel Respiro is the seaside villa, yes, says Gavin. Thank you. I thought it might be. Um, thankfully, La Pausa in EDP is still excellent, if not better, says Woozy. Yeah, some of them are fine, but this one, I think, has suffered, and I think they ought to go back to the EDT for this one. Um, experiencing, or Amina, I should say, says, I own the EDP, and now I need to find a sample of the EDT. Well, it would be interesting to find out what you think of the EDT, because if you came to the EDP first and you like it, then maybe that is the one that will do the Bell Respiro thing for you and you won't feel like you're missing out or anything. Um, and Rachel says, I bought your book online and was so pleased to find it, and then it arrived in German. Oh no, see, oh, sorry. My book is hard to get now in um, in English, and there are people out there online charging ridiculous sums for it. Somebody on Instagram sent me a screen grab from Amazon, of Amazon.com of some seller somewhere charging a thousand dollars to which I would only say I wish I'd hung on to more copies because I'd be flogging them for a, you know I'd undercut them and sell, sell it for eight hundred dollars does anybody pay that much for this book I, I doubt it I hope not uh C. Beeble says my all-time favorite green scent is Nikki de saint Fal's All Défendu but Bel Respiro just beautiful. And what makes it different, I suppose, from number 19 is that it doesn't have that high synth note, so it's not floral. And then it goes into the most delicious... No, delicious is the wrong word. The most refined, the most sophisticated, um, woody, musky bass. Really special, really special. And this is this has now got to be kept for reference. And I will wear the, the EDP, but this has got to be archived. Um... What have we got here? Oh, not the worst pricing in the fragrance community, says Woozy. I've seen 2011 Le Mal for $1,000. Really? And Sylvia says, I struggle with green scents. It's so interesting to hear about these ones. Inspired to try some again. Good. Gavin, I think I got it wrong. Bel Respiro is the one with the black and white interior. I googled. Oh, well, never mind. Never mind. It's a villa. It's a villa. We've got three to go. Again, regular viewers may have guessed this one. This is from 2016. I was immediately taken with this scent when I first tried it. It's from Ulrich Lang, the brand Ulrich Lang, and it's called Apsu, named after a goddess of water. Still don't know who the perfumer is, uh, but the brand owner and creative director does not to reveal the names of the perfumers, which I personally think is a little bit of a shame. I've told him so, but as long as he keeps giving us interesting scents. There is a new one from this brand that I haven't yet tried. I think it's called Lethe, isn't it? Um, but this is, this, uh, without any question, my favourite from them. That's... And again, it does something different and it does something fascinating with green because even though it is very definitely green, so leafy, maybe even violet leafy, it's also got a greenness coming through from a kind of banana aspect, an unripe banana, so banana banana skin that that is that is still rather green and is only just starting to turn yellow. Um, great comment from Virginie. I love green fragrances. They make me feel young and strong. There is something youthful about a lot of these, isn't there? And maybe that's because of associations, you know, plants signal life and growth and nature and rebirth. I, absolutely, you're right. That's a good word to 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 coin, to use in this context. Amina says, whoa, just noticed the colour of your shirt. <laughs> the most beautiful shade of green. Thank you very much. There you go. We do plan some of these things ahead. I reckon the new Aesop Eremia, or Eremia, which is basically their take on number 19, could be a good green. Ooh, they tend to do good scents as well. Ought to check that one out. I don't like green scents, says Anne, when I'm wearing a suit. That's an interesting one. What if you were wearing a green suit? Or would you not wear it? Or would that just be too much? So Apsu. Apsu is also a rare example of a convincing aqueous scent, a watery scent. Um, but it's it's very, very still water. So it's a beautiful lake and there are palm trees. And as I say, there is this banana skin and there is dappled sunlight. It's not over hot in this particular landscape. So you have got serenity, 
and 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 a lot goes back to the to the idea that it's inspired by a water goddess um and it it just works perfectly and also what i love about it is that all of this is lifted through an inclusion of a really really clever well judged peppery note um yeah and i'm really enjoying smelling it smelling it again and i'm thinking i need to wear it a bit more um And absolutely floral as well, maybe a suggestion of jasmine, but everything, everything, everything is in support of this idea of greenness and wateriness. Beautiful work, honestly, really, really stunning work. Um, Tomasz says, I wonder if any Goutals or Adrienne will make the list. Mm, no, sorry, Przepraszam. It smells like a pandemic-struck, overgrown golf course, if it does, if that makes any sense. As in, you mean it's like empty, right, sort of 28 days later, golf course? It's like lying in the tall green grass with no with no ticks. Yeah, that would be nice. But I'll tell you which Gutal ne nearly made it. Their fig, their Ninfeo Mio. That nearly made it, and I've got an old bottle of that, but but it didn't in the end. Virginie, I wear number 19 and Cristal, but maybe green fragrances are also depending on your body chemistry. I'm blonde with blue eyes. Maybe they fit more because of my body chemistry. Maybe, but you know, I don't really go along with that body chemistry thing so much. I think, I think a lot of, the, I think we make a little bit too much of that. I think anybody can wear whatever they like. So we mentioned um, Annie Guttal and Danine Feo Mio. We've mentioned fig a few times, so we had to have a fig in here. And I said that there would be an Hermes, and the gardens have been mentioned a few times. So this is from 2003, the very first of the gardens from Jean-Claude and Elena, Jardin en Méditerranée, the Mediterranean garden, um, which is a great fig. And I thought what was wonderful about this was that it, it didn't go with the Mediterranean cliché, right? So it's not the European shore of the Mediterranean, but it's the North African one, because it's inspired by... Um, I, I gather what was a famous um, North African garden, but I forget which country it was. I want to say Algeria, but um, I may be wrong. So somebody can look it up and, and let us know. Um, this is probably the jardin that, that I wear the least, truth be told. The one that I wear the most, as you will know, is Sur le Nil. I also really admire... Um, and appreciate Jardin après la, la mousson, um, but I, I prefer smelling that rather than wearing it. But if we're talking green, yeah, and, and if we're talking fig, and things like tomato leaf, um, Eric says, love this one, never bought a bottle though, I adore après la mousson most. Yeah, that's the most interesting one. Fougère Emeraude is stunning, says Dan. Um, yeah, that, 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 that's a good choice. It leans feminine, says A to Z in one. What, this, the Mediterranean one? Maybe, I suppose there, maybe there is a little bit of sweetness to it. But as an evocation of fig leaf, there, there is one particular, I mean, this is just a sort of random story here, but it just shows how powerful these evocations can be. Uh, it, one of our favourite spots in, in the south of France to which we haven't been to for a very long time for obvious reasons. But there's one bit where if you sort of, if you're walking to get from A to B, you know, it doesn't matter, you have to go past a restaurant, a sort of steakhouse restaurant that has got in its garden fig trees growing and they're, they're very established for quite old fig trees and so they're quite tall and the leaves and the branches overhang over the the wall of the of this restaurant. And every single time I walk past it, you just get a whiff of the fig leaves, and every single time I smell this perfume, I am back there walking straight past that restaurant wall. Um, and it's interesting because even though it displays Jean-Claude Elena's minimalism in that kind of watercolour approach that he liked to use at Hermès, it is quite fleshy, it is quite full-bodied. Um, very, very three-dimensional. There is a lot going on here. That there's there are, there are, there is a strong presence of woods in the base. Definitely something earthy as well to convey the garden. So it's not quite as. I I use this word with reservedly. It's not quite as bloodless as some of his other scents. I don't think his scents are bloodless, but you know what I mean because he is accused of bloodlessness sometimes. Comments again. 
Uh, Wayne says, I once worked with a lady in the perfume department of a store and she could only wear a couple of fragrances that suited her skin. Everything else smelled like cat pee on her. Interesting. Uh, uh, Pragueza says, L'artisan parfumeur, premier figuet, absolutely. The, 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 I, th I think we accept that that was the first fig perfume. Jardin en Méditerranée says, Gavin, who's gotten do doing Googling, conceived as a watercolour, this perfume composed in 2003 is inspired by a hint of the poetic in the Tunisian thank you garden of Leila Menchari, director of displays for Hermès. I knew it was an Hermès employee, or at least she was at the time. Um, would Viking cologne count as green given it's vomit inducing? <laughs> Why do you people want to do this to me? Um, would you say Gucci Envy is green, says jo Josie? I'm sorry, I don't know how you say your name. Yes, yes, absolutely, but discontinued, so not on this list. Um, and Viking Cologne is the worst thing I've sampled all year, says Ramsey. Let's get off Viking Cologne. I love all of Jean-Claude Elena's Jardin, says Angeline. And let's do the last one. So the last perfume for this season of Love at First Scent. Hermès Eau de Citron Noir, says Silent Noise. Um, was that green? I don't think that was particularly green. Right. This one I adore. This is from 2012. We have already had this perfumer featured here, but uh, making something for a, for a different brand. Um, I wonder if anybody could guess. The regular viewers will know that I that I love this, but I'm seeing somebody saying that gnomes are creepier. You're talking about gardens now. Ormond Jane woman and man are interesting dark green scents, says Rachel Grigg. Uh, Geranium pour monsieur, says Herb. No, no Garlin, says Gavin. We've got, we've got Aqua Allegoria. We've got Herba Fresca here. We have got a Garla. Is anybody going to guess it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's put you out of your misery. It is actually... but Oh, thank you very much. Davlone. Leur Vertueuse. Um, the same perfumer who made the Garla. This is from Cartier from Les Heures. The third hour. Uh, Leur Vertueuse. The, the, the virtuous hour, I think. But it's, it's also a play on the word vert, green. This is fantastic. This is such good stuff from 2012. Have I have I said that it's from 2012? This is just it. It is very much as though she went back to Herba Fresca and thought, Ah, oh, can I can I make it even greener? Can I make it even more like you're just rubbing yourself um, over the tennis court at Wimbledon? Ah, oh, it it's the the grass. And the first time I tried this was when it had been out in the UK for a few days and I was in the um, a black hall, the perfumery hall at Harrods. Um, and it was, it, it it just made me burst out laughing because the shock that it, it elicited, really, really good, positive shock, was wonderful. And I just thought, yes, Mathieu de Laurent, Laurent has done it again. Fantastic, um, freshly cut grass note. And then the most beautiful way into a really, really green lavender and it, 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 like the Herba Herb Fresca, it has that feeling, that quality of cutting through the rubbish, cutting through the mugginess, cutting through the fog, lifting everything, pushing it aside, and mintiness, yes, uh, absolutely, but but not not the sort of overt mintiness that you get from the Herba Fresca. This is much more about grass and lavender, um, and it's just heavenly. It is there. There is a corner of heaven that I'm sure smells of this. There's a corner of heaven that probably smells of cristal. Um, that, that's where the angels live. But when they just want to do a little bit of frolicking and when they want to indulge in slightly more fleshy delights, fle fleshy pursuits, they will go to a place that smells of, of um, the third hour from Cartier. And what are we getting here? I suppose a kind of floral note again, you know, suggestions of the kind of heady own jasmine feel that you might get um, from Eau Sauvage. Uh, I know that Mathilde Laurent is a huge fan of Eau Sauvage. Not that this is a, an Eau Sauvage homage, but she's, she probably thinks about Eau Sauvage a lot subconsciously when she's composing. She did properly revisit Eau Sauvage for the, was it the fourth hour, the Leur, Leur Fougueuse? Um, so there are our ten. And that is us done at nearly the one hour mark for Love at First Send for this season, if I can um, grace what we do with that term. Uh, all being well, 
if we're all safe and well and the world is still kind of relatively holding itself together, uh, I will be back with some more live videos first, second week of September, probably more likely second week of September. Um, but uh, if you're if you're watching the recording, please keep the comments um, coming. Can you please mention names in the description, says Sanjay? Absolutely, I will. But if you just give me a, a few hours, and I also always do timestamps on these videos so that you can just click on the one that you're interested in. Um, as I said earlier, there will be a few written blog posts that are scheduled to pop up over the course of um, August over on personalaise.com. So please do check those out. But until then, Thank you very much for always making these videos so much fun. Thank you for your insights. Thank you for your knowledge. Thank you for your enthusiasm, for your support, uh, for, for, um, well, for, for just being here. And be good, stay safe, be healthy, be kind, smell great. See you soon. Bye.